The Perlman Performing Arts Center is a new performing arts center that sits just adjacent to the 9-11 Memorial. It's wrapped in a marble from Portugal. During the day, it does project a kind of sobriety, but then in the evenings, it dematerializes and glows and has this incredible orange glow, amber glow, that asserts itself within the context. At the core of the building is a, a really exciting novel configuration of auditoria that can extend and combine to create 10 possible different proportions and over 62 different stage audience configurations. The wrapper basically turns the building into a mystery box. My name is Joshua Ramos. I'm the founding principal of Rex. We're the design architect for the Perlman Performing Arts Center at the World Trade Center. The stone is what we call biaxially book matched, meaning it's the same around a horizontal axis, and it's also the same around a vertical axis. There are just under 5,000 tiles. The stone is half an inch, 12 millimeters thick and it's actually laminated between two pieces of glass. The stone has iron in it. That's actually what creates that kind of amber glow. So the facade is illuminated by a series of chandeliers that run around this perimeter. So the chandeliers are designed as chevrons and they have linear elements on them. And the top and the bottom one are the brightest and they shine up and shine down to the farthest distance. And as the linear elements get closer and closer and closer to horizontal, they get slightly dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, with the effect that the, the building has a relatively uniform illumination at night. It's our belief that every time someone comes to the building, they are likely to see something they didn't expect. While this is the least likely configuration you'll ever see it in, uh, it's, in some ways it's the best configuration to get a, a sense of the lay of the land. Nominally, we have three auditoria. There is the Zuccotti that's 450 seats, the Nichols that's 250 seats, and the Duke that is 99 seats. That is what we call the Zuccotti. This zone right here is one of the scene docks. That is the Nichols. The space over here between them is the next scene dock and then the small one is the Duke. The floor that I'm standing on can be flat, as you see, but it can take all different kinds of geometries, including a rake that goes all the way up to the first balcony. So there would be scenarios in which everything that I'm standing in right now is all seating. And in that case, you would be looking at the Nichols as really a deep end stage. So that's the first thing. There is four massive acoustic guillotine walls, one there and one there. Those are each 46 tons each and then there's a third and a fourth there. In addition, this element and this element, that element and that element are movable balconies. Right now you're seeing the horseshoe in the widest configuration. They could be brought in to make a tight theater in the round, like a, a Shakespearean theater in the round. Directly beneath this space is what we call the trap. This is one of the most, I think, spectacular spaces in the building, which no one will ever see. A trap is an underfloor area that allows you to build different geometries of a stage. What's more unique about this than most is that it is automated. So the purpose of this is to allow the floor of the Zuccotti to be able to either take different stage configurations or different seating configurations. And all of that happens using these things that we call gala lifts. These are lift mechanisms. And so the purpose of these is to allow the floors to move up to two floors in height vertically without taking up any space beneath it. So these cylinders grow out of this drum like magic. I think how a lot of people like to think about, you know, a good building, it will reveal itself to you over time. We actually hope that the building will never reveal itself to you. That the more you use it, the more mystified you will be, the more magical the experience will be, the more you will stand outside, stare up at this glowing amber cube and wonder how on earth are all those different things happening in this one relatively small building. We are two weeks out from opening. We're only a couple weeks from opening. 
Every day that I come down here, it's looking better and better. I'm David Rockwell. I designed the lobby at the Perlman. The memorial was a kind of sacred space, and this building would not be a distraction to that, but would have a kind of quiet dignity about it, and that life inside the building would reveal itself when you got in. We're on the staircase that leads you into the pack, and it's a very dramatic way to enter. And it starts with a ceiling, which is the first thing you see. You're coming up a steep set of stairs, and you see the ceiling and these wood ribs with integrated lighting that move in the same axis as the building. So the ceiling also provides a function wayfinding that when a show starts, the rest of the lights can dim and a little pre-show ritual and the ribs that go east-west can get brighter and you'll just kind of follow the light. So in terms of thinking of this as a piece of theater, and I always look at the overlap between architecture and theater, once we establish this field of ribs going north-south, we design them in a way that they move around the cross bracing of the building. So circulation is something that happens in these wider expanses, but also as you get into the restaurant, circulation allows you to move through and see these pockets of seating. You know, there's been so much written about New York being a great place for public theater and people watching. I think this table and this bench is a great place to have a drink and wait for your seat and kind of look at the swirl of action happening around it. Restaurant seats, hotel seats, tend to be defined by how long you want someone to sit in the seat. This is like a 15 minute perch. Also, generally, I find people want to sit with their back against a wall or a banquette. So if you look at the way the room's laid out, there are some smaller areas that feel like a dining room within a dining room. And there are areas that are very much in the public flow. I think the strongest analogy between a restaurant and a meal and a theater piece is they live primarily in your memory. All of the work that goes into that experience lives in some collective memory you have about the experience. I want people when they leave this restaurant to feel welcomed. I want them to feel energized. I'd like them to feel like they were at this very special place for a special meal that happens either before or after the show, they say. I always found the most interesting part of any place that I live is performance areas. And I think this is a piece of New York that will be very welcome. Dating back to the original master plan, there was always a performing arts center on this site. This would be the place in which the restorative power of art would be the counterpoint to the incredible commemoration that was happening directly adjacent. I lived a couple blocks away north on Greenwich Street during the attacks. So for me personally, working here came with a, a lot of, we have to do something that we're exceptionally proud of. We have to do something that we gave the full measure of our abilities. I've lived in Lower Manhattan for more than three decades and was very much a New Yorker during 9-11 and was part of a number of rebuilding initiatives. So when we were invited to participate in this, it was an immediate yes, because it is in some ways the final building block and keeps the promise of arts being a part of this neighborhood. That's a really wonderful, beautiful thing to participate in. Now we'll see that come to life. What would we hope for this building? Certainly we hope people to think it's beautiful, but way beyond that, way beyond that, we hope that it inspires incredibly talented people to do profound work and that that profound work inspires the public. But I think globally it will be a place that people will come to. And when they come here, they'll find a place to hang out, a place to have a conversation about theater, a community of people who are interested in the storytelling outside of just the theaters. And I think that sense of coming together as an audience will be something that really differentiates the pack from any other facility in New York. You know, New York has reinvented itself over and over and over and over again. It's been this incredible laboratory for architecture and urbanism for hundreds of years. And certainly the ambition and scale of this master plan and what was done here participates in that. 
I hope that we've created a building that can live up to the expectations of New York. <laughs>